Now I want to do turn a corner here today uh, and offer my advice to the people of Iran and to the Muslims of the Middle East and to the Muslims globally. I want to offer a word of advice to them in light of the fact that Soleimani has been nuked by Tribulation Trump and his gang of evil men, if you will. And now the whole world is on edge as to what will be the response coming from the Middle East. Uh, will there be war between the two? I think the Khomeini has said that, the, uh, that this is an act of war, the killing of Suleimani, Su uh, Su uh, that this is an act of war against the sovereign nation of Iran. Others have said similar kinds of the killing of al-Baghdadi, or allegedly killing of al-Baghdadi some time ago was not on the same level in as much as that he was not a leader of any organized national state. ISIS is, was not a, a state like Iran or Iraq or Russia or England or France or Germany. But Soleimani is and was a general in Iran. It's like killing the Secretary of Defense or the Secretary of State or the Vice President of this nation. It's an act of war. And so everybody's on the edge as to what now Iran is going to do in terms of defending their honor and defending the life of Soleimani. I would like to offer some advice to the Iranians. I don't know if they'll take it. I did pray about this. I will not confess this as a prophecy, as a word before the Lord. I will not do that. But I would like to offer them some, some advice. Is that they can respond to that event, that assassination, that nuking, that whatever it was of Suleimani. They can, they can respond in, what, they can, in, in a number of ways. They can, they can clog up the Persian Gulf and ships will have to sail all the way around the, Cape, the Horn of Africa in order to be able to get shipping oil from the Middle East, that great landfill of, of oil, and it would cause the price of oil to go through the roof. It'll bring financial suffering and hardships upon most everybody uh, in the West if they clogged up that little Strait of Amuz, if they clogged up the Persian, and they can do that quite easily because that's in their domain, that's in their territory, it's right in their doorstep. They can do it in a heartbeat. Of course, there could be a response to that with, of massive air attacks by American forces and by naval forces as well. But the damage would have been done. Or they could use some of their other cyber techniques, they could use other terrorist activities, they could bomb and blow up bridges and dams and trains and stations and a whole lot of other things, bridges right here in America and just create havoc and have people afraid to go out their homes. They, they, they're capable of doing it. They've got that kind of abilities to do it and they got people and men that are committed to be able to do it. One of the things I'd like to say to the sons of, to the, uh, to the Iranians is that they are Hamites. By that I mean their mother is Hagar. And Hagar was an Egyptian. And Egyptians are Hamites. Though the Iranians or the Muslims, their father uh, eventually is, well immediately is Ishmael, but their grandfather is Abraham. And their mother is Hagar. Now, because of the power of the blood, you are who your mother is. If your mother is a Muslim, you could be Japheth. You are a Muslim, if your mother's a Muslim. If your mother is a Jew, your father could be Muslim, you are a Jew. And this is biblically known. That's why I had such trouble with people thinking Obama was black, his mama was white. I mean, and everybody knows that, or at least they should have. But Muslims and Iranians, if my advice to them at this very troubled time, wait, everybody waiting for the first response, is don't respond at all. Don't respond in kind. I would advise the Islamic people, and I don't know if they would listen to me, to don't give Tribulation Trump the opportunity to become even more maniacal. However, oh, there's a problem with that. Because Tribulation Trump is such a sick individual, if they don't respond, he'll keep jugging at them until they do respond. He's a sick man. He's a very sick 
individual. But not just him. There are a number of Japheth men around him that are equally as sick as he is. So to not respond is not necessarily the safest place. But I think after this first strike, you could at least wait and maybe before Trillation Trump can get the generals or the Defense Department or the Pentagon to respond again, they would have impeached them and moved them from office, potentially, because that's what's on the agenda as well. But Tribulation Trump is looking to change the conversation from impeachment to war footing, and he's done that. He's done it successfully. And if he can keep it going to save himself, he'll kill millions of Muslims just to save his presidency. I think one of the tragedies of the 20th century is the invasion of Iraq by George Bush. Saddam Hussein had no weapons of mass destruction. And they went into Baghdad. And literally millions of Muslims were killed and tens of thousands of American soldiers were killed searching for weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and there were none. And it is one of the tragedies of our modern day that Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with 9-11, and that was simply a ploy, and it was a devastating one, and I don't know how George Bush sleeps at night, when you realize all the children that were killed, women that were killed, families that were displaced because of nothing. There was no legitimate reason to ever go into Iraq, but he did. Remember his father went in earlier with the Kuwait incident, but he would not go to Baghdad because he realized what the events were. This is just some advice I'm giving. I'll get back to what we were talking about a few moments ago. I'm just trying to cover all bases that God will have me cover today. Iranians don't do it. And you will not lose any, if you will, honor by not doing it. But you're dealing with a madman. Now, on the other hand, the Iranians could say, yeah, we know that, Pastor, but we're willing to fight to the death. We can make America suffer a whole lot more than they can make us suffer. We're used to suffering. And if Americans sneeze, they think that's suffering. We can make America suffer, and we can make the allies of America suffer globally for years. That's one aspect. And aspect number three is, is that the Bible says there should be wars and rumors of war. So I'm not sure that my, I, I, I would not want my advice to be contradictory to the scriptures. I would not want that to be the issue. But I would want to advise that we're dealing with a, a sick man. Moreover, it needs to be clear and understood that the Japheth man, his day has come. The day of judgment has come. You, when you, stand up for just a second. When you think about life itself. When we say, let me hear the conclusion of the whole matter. When we say, let me hear the conclusion of the whole matter, as, as Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes, fear God and keep his commandment for this is the whole duty of man. Whatever you do, ever how you do it and ever who you do it would, understand there is a conclusion of that matter. There is a conclusion of whatever it is might be your position. There is a conclusion of whatever might be your thought patterns. There is a conclusion to your actions. Your immediacy or your genesis of an action that you take may be pleasurable and delightful. But mind you, there is a conclusion of the whole matter. It's coming to an end. There's always a conclusion. There is never an advent without a conclusion. So what we're asking here today is to hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And the conclusion of what we have now in the terms of the folding chapters of humanity is the Japheth man's day has come as a conclusion and God has found him wanting and has judged him and has stripped him of his power. That's the conclusion of the Japheth man and his main throne of power is in America and in Europe. That's the conclusion. And let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So I think the Muslims, the son of Hagar, and Muslims who are Hamites, they're your brothers, those of you who are Hamites. And let me say as well, I, when I say Japheth, there is an escape hatch for some Japheth men and women to escape 
the conclusion, the horrific conclusion that God has judged the Japheth man and found him wanting and found his kingdom to be destroyed and his days are over with. There is an escape for some Japheth people to escape to God's word. But the day of the Hamite is just beginning. So my advice to the, um, to the Iranians would be, don't react. And please remember, and, you need, and, and Muslims need to talk about this, is that they're the son of Hagar, rather than talking about this so much they're the son of Abraham. You may take your seats.